Just think about it for a minute. If the breadwinner of your household would die today, how would your life look like? It's our choice to live the way we live. This happens to a lot of people every day. If something happened to them, then the people that are behind, left behind, really struggle. And we live in a way that we're always needing to borrow money to achieve our goals. You're gonna have to excuse the background noises, because right now... I don't know if you can see him, but Karis is up there. And Hope is trying to get to him. Yeah, let me show you where we are. But this is the other side of the creek. I don't know if you can see it there. So I'm on the other side of the property. Oh, you can see it right there. Look, the creek. Anyway, all that to say, it's uh, they follow me everywhere. So it's not like I can find a quiet spot. And I wanted to talk to you and kind of do a little explanation, I guess, of some comments that I've been receiving lately. But I feel like I need to address it so we can move on. You know, it's just one of those things that I'm like, I just want to move on from this topic. And it's all about people suggesting uh, different things. And I've been talking about how we've been living off grid for you know years and then we finally got power we still i mean we do have a well because we drill a well but we don't have a pump so we are still holding our water and there are some times in the winter where we have access to a pump and we can pump water from that well uh so it kind of varies and i don't really have to give specifics of things but just so you know we don't have it in our property set up the way that most people do so because of that when i mention things some people feel the need to suggest things because they don't know and they don't know our situation they don't know what we're doing oh my gosh now it's the dogs they're playing one is on one side of the creek the other one's on the other side of the creek and they're running along the creek they're playing. There's there's no mean spirit anything. Cookie, that's enough. You're an old lady, you should know better. I don't have little kids, but then I have tons of animals that think that they can behave like little babies all day long. Anyway, so I, long story short, I just want to make a few things clear. When we lived in the city for about 20 years, and we loved it, we thought we did for 20 years, but then eventually what happened is in 2017, for the second time, I got really, really sick. And it was with something very random. It was one of those infections that I think it affects... Like this tiny, I, I don't want to say maybe a hundred of people in the entire United States. And it's like such a random infection that really doctors don't even look for it because it's weird. Okay, so back in 2017, we were on vacation during uh, Thanksgiving in California and we were staying in Huntington Beach and if you've ever been in November to Huntington Beach usually it's a really nice weather there's no wind the the, the water is still kind of warmish and so it's it's nice so we go swimming in November <laughs> so we were there I was swimming and then I don't know what happened but I started feeling sick like I had my my throat and this has nothing to do with the ocean uh, there's no way but it kind of ties to the story so bear with me so what happened is that I started feeling like I was getting the, the flu uh, my body was aching my head was aching and I had this horrible uh, throat pain and it was almost unbearable I started running a fever the second day we were still there and I thought I'm just gonna take ibuprofen the kids were sick before we left during 
that Thanksgiving break and I usually you know it's like you get it then the next person get it in the family and the next person get it in the family and it's a, a little chain so I thought that's what it is and we stay there for a couple more days and then eventually I was feeling so sick that I knew I couldn't wait to get home to Utah to see a doctor so we went to the emergency room and I was seen by this doctor who assumed that what happened is as I was um, swimming in the ocean, something, water must have gotten inside my ear. And she thought that I had an ear infection, even though I had no ear pain. So she gives me, she prescribes this uh, very expensive for being out of state kind of uh, drops. So I put them inside my ear and she said, in 24 hours, you're going to be gold it'll be fine. So I do that for 24 hours and I'm just getting sicker and sicker and sicker and nothing is helping. And my, um, you know, my temperature is really hard to control. So we decide to pack everything and go back home. The funny thing is that we were driving back home. So I slept throughout the entire trip back home, which was about 13 hours. So once we get home, I go straight to the hospital. I'm like, I cannot even wait to see my doctor. The doctor looks at me and he says, um, no, you don't have an ear infection. <laughs> That's not it. We need to figure out what it is. So they run all kinds of tests. They, you know, oh, all, all of this was happening as I was getting a little something. It's, it was like, um, in the beginning, it was maybe really small kind of little bulge bulging thing i had on the side of my throat then it started growing and growing and by the time i saw the emergency doctor in utah he said um there's something wrong there's something really really wrong and you're struggling with a horrible infection so i'm going to give you this really strong combination of medicine if it doesn't work for you then you go to the emergency room you go to the hospital emergency room and uh, they will get you admitted so all of this I'm thinking what is happening there's no way there's no way I mean what is what is this infection that they cannot find it and so by now this was huge it was probably this big and they were touching it thinking is there a pus in there is there you know it was so weird and so I get that night, I'm still running the highest fever. Only thing that was working to lower my fever, but I could not take like often enough was ibuprofen, but nothing else, nothing else was working. So my stomach was a mess. I was like, ugh, it was so bad. So eventually that night, I'm like almost like dying in my bed. My husband says, no, let's go to the emergency room. Let's have them check you again. This was the third doctor who was going to see me. So I go to emergency room. The, the nurse looks at me and says, how long have you had that disgusting thing on the side of your neck? And I said, well, she didn't say it like that, but I'm sure she meant that. Uh, so I tell her, you know, for about a week by then. And she's like, you didn't go to the doctor? I'm like, yeah, this is going to be the third place and nobody can figure out what's wrong with me. They admitted me. They put a couple of IVs. I was completely dehydrated. Uh, my heart was like, it was really slow and it was very scary. So they end up poking me up to a bunch of things and putting me there and days pass and they cannot figure out what's wrong with me what kind of infection do i have and you know at first they thought it's a weird case of strep and you know it's probably trying to get to your blood so they were treating me like i could not see my kids i was desperate to see my kids i could not see my kids they let my husband stay with me because he was exposed to me the entire time uh, but everyone would come in covered from face to toes i mean it was it was it was crazy it was like i had the lepros leprosy or something but i'm there they realize i do not have strep um they keep running tests they keep doing they're like well we don't know what kind of infection you have but we don't have enough time to figure it out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do rounds of antibiotics and we're gonna just flush hopefully we're gonna figure out which one works for you and then we'll go from there 
So they try it different. I think they were doing four different rounds and they were all different combinations of antibiotics. And I was on the third round and I was dying. I was running the highest fever. I was signing DNRs. And I mean, at that point, nobody was giving me hope that I was going to get out of this weird infection that was, I mean, I was hallucinating. I was seeing animals inside my, you know, room in the hospital. I stayed there for about a week and I remember my coming to Jesus moment, which, you know, it's now that I think about it, it's, it was such a weird thing that happened that night. But I remember saying, you know, I am not ready to die. I am not. And I don't want to die. There's so much I want to do. And there's so much I want to change in my life. And there's so many things I want to do before I go. And then I could hear this voice coming to my head and saying, well, then get on with it. And that was my, I'm like, right, well, what am I waiting for? I mean, I'm living a life that I'm not enjoying here in the city. Yes, I'm making enough money to buy everything that I want. And yes, I have the, you know, I have the ability to not only provide to my family, but to get the things that I think will make me happy, but I'm not being happy. My husband is not happy. And I don't think that raising the kids in the city, I mean, even though I did it, I didn't think it was uh, where we should stay, you know, at least with my kids, try to move and see what they think and the older ones would move and do their own things. But I'd still give a few days of living in the country for my younger ones. All of those things were going through my head. And I'm like, well, I need to move, but I don't know where. I know that what I want to do is live a simple life uh, where I don't owe any money to any credit card. I don't have a mortgage where I don't have to worry about making enough money because the big lesson, she's so, she's so wet. The big lesson that I learned is that, you know, if, if that would have happened to my husband, who was the one that was bringing the most income to our household at that point, if he would have been in the hospital for a week, it would have had some really bad consequences financially. And if he would have gotten sick to the point that something would have happened to him, I would have found myself in a really bad position where I would have to, at that point, I wasn't working full time. I was uh, working from home already and I was doing other things. So that would mean that I, I'd have to sell the house, you know, and get a couple jobs and that way be able to afford a lifestyle that we were used to having. But it was a big eye-opening moment where I realized I was healthy a couple weeks ago and then this happened. We are not able to support ourselves with a one person income. And even if we were able to support ourselves with a one person income, what if that person is the one that gets sick? How that would completely turn my life upside down to kind of keep things going. It was unsustainable. And that really opened my eyes to what happened next. And um, back to the story at the hospital. The next morning, after I have this little awakening moment, the next morning, I feel a little better. And so the doctor comes and says, finally, last night at midnight, when uh, the new nurse came, she tried my last round of antibiotics, which was number four, and it was working. Uh, they did some blood test and it was working and just they could not believe it. So they're like, it's too soon to say that you will survive this, but um, you have better chances now that it seems like antibiotics are getting to there. They were very scared that I was going septic and, you know, if... I didn't have 24 more hours to keep trying antibiotics. It was gonna, I was gonna go septic. Long story short, what happened is that day the antibiotics start working. 
I start feeling better. I am telling you that for the last week in the hospital, it, my fever was so high that they would have to bring ice and put it all over my body. And I don't know if you've ever had a fever with somebody putting you eyes or burying you in eyes. I hope you never had to do that. But if you if you ever experience that, you know that it's like one of the most shocking things to the body because you're completely burning and then there's this cold stain on you and it's like you're shaking but you're hot at the same time and you're it's like your body's in a complete shock and you know for the last week I was just thinking there's no way I'm gonna get out of this hospital these doctors do not know what I have and clearly I'm dying I remember crying with the nurses there was this one nurse she was like I was telling her I had this horrible headache and she was like T you know she was like thinking about it thinking about it she's like oh, what can I mean I'm gonna bring you some uh, Tylenol stuff I'm like Tylenol does nothing for my headaches so um, I was like I you know I just cannot and it's not letting me think and she was like do you drink coffee every day and I'm like well something stronger than coffee every day she's like then you probably have are having withdrawals so she brought me a soda I had some soda and my headache went away I remember with that nurse I would cry every night because I miss my kids so much and she you know with all cover head to toe thinking that I could be contagious she would hug me and you know stay with me and you know just kind of I don't know, trying to make me feel better about something that really nobody thought I was going to get out. Eventually, I stayed in the hospital for two, three more days until the rounds were completely done. And then they gave me some medicine to take home. I remember the moment that they took me out of that hospital in a wheelchair. And I was going through uh, the hallway. I was looking at the nurses who thought I was dying. Clearly, I was dying. Uh, they were moving me from one floor to the next. I mean, they got an expert from six hours away from us that would study, I guess, different kinds of infection, like an infection specialist. Or urine, and nobody was able to figure it out. So clearly, nobody thought I was getting out of the hospital. And what happened is when I was being wheeled out of the hospital, the smiles in the nurses' faces was like, I remember this one guy, this nurse, that he was outside when my husband was trying to help me into the truck. And he just walked to us and said, oh, I'm so glad you're going home. And, you know, all that to say is that it wasn't in my head that this was happening. This was really serious. And it really taught me that we live in a um, society that... Um, wants so much we want things to be easier we want gadgets to make it faster to make it uh, sustainable sustainable and we live in a in a, we live in a way that we're always needing to borrow money to achieve our goals you know we had and I am so thankful that this happened to me because it opened my eyes to realize what if my my father what if my husband gets a really bad illness and dies suddenly this happens to a lot of people every day like the breadwinner um, in a lot of household is just one either the woman or the man and if something happened to them then the people that are behind left behind really struggle and I did not want that I did not want to struggle I did not want to give myself to work in two or three jobs in order to pay for stuff I did not want in the first place I did not need in the first place so when people suggest things that are really out of my reach um, I try to be kind about the way I explain myself but sometimes it's hard to make people understand that we all have different mindsets about money about finances and about what really is a smart investment compared to others what others think is a really good investment and in, uh, in money I think that if we are able to do things 
uh, cash, then yeah, we struggle for a while because you know nobody wants to be without power for this long. Nobody wants to be without a well pump for this long, and. It's making our life, everyday lives, so much harder because of it. But I also do know that we did not work for over six months. And we were still, God still provided. And we were able to pay our bills. And we were able to um, eat. And we were able to not worry about paying a mortgage. And we were not worried about making, you know any kind of a special arrangements because we were both sick we were both not able to work not able because our body was completely hurting and if you've never had a car accident where every inch of your body hurts you're lucky and I hope you never have to but um, you will never understand what it means you have you don't have a broken bone but Every single muscle, every single cell of your body, it seems like it's in pain and sending these pain signals where you, you can't even move. It's like the most horrible thing in the world and we knew we were not going to be able to work. If that would have happened while we were at the city, we would have lost everything okay because our savings wouldn't be able to sustain us for six months of payments on a mortgage and all the other things that we were able to acquire so the point of this is yes it's always going to take us a long time to get things that other people get it very easily and very early on their homesteading journey but our mindset as far as money it's very different from other people if we are going to use a certain amount of money that we don't have cash it needs to be paid within the year and that means making a lot of sacrifices in order to be able to be debt free I still have a couple of things that I'm making payments on that I really want to finish and that's why it's kind of hard to you know get going with getting a pump uh, and that's why it's hard to get our um, septic done and that is why the process of the house it's getting longer because I could go and I could get a loan for manufacture home that it's beautiful i don't know if you have seen new manufacture homes but they are beautiful they're spacious the the floors the the paint the i mean the bathrooms everything looks amazing but then i would have to get a construction loan to get my pump and my septic and all the other things the foundation and all the other things and that would put us under for a really long time so there are certain things that will have to happen before we have a house and it's our choice to live the way we live and it's more sustainable than our previous lifestyle and God knows that if something happens to one of us uh, this will continue to keep going because we are able to continue to keep going without major income because we don't have major debt so that was my lesson to learn because of my weird uh, way of figuring out that the lifestyle that I was living was not sustainable if you are living a lifestyle that you think is sustainable because you know you work and you have savings and you have credit and, and, and that's awesome I'm not judging you and I don't think you should be doing anything different all I'm trying to say is for me and my household um, we decided that making the effort to leave a place not only to enjoy ourselves but to leave for future generations in our family to be debt free and to be to live a more sustainable lifestyle but it's not about the homesteading part just yet but it's about making smarter decisions because I would love to get all the things that a lot of people suggest uh, I would love to get them done today and I could go and put on a credit card and get it done but I choose not to number one because I shredded my credit cards and number two because it's I don't want to be in a position where I felt like I was trapped 
I don't want to feel trapped. Um, I know that as long as I pay my taxes here, this is my home, this is where I will live. I will, can always improve upon it. I can always make things easier for me. I can always make things better for me. But I don't want to do it on a base of debt and I don't want to do it um, kind of gambling in the future. The way that this... There's a raccoon up there. It's on the top of that tree. I'm just gonna bark him away. Anyways, hope to inspire somebody else that maybe is in the same position that I was and maybe they haven't had this awakening moment where they realize, oh my goodness, life can end today and I did not do what I wanted to do with my life. I was not 100% happy even though I had all the things that should make me happy. That is my main goal with this video. Not because I feel like I have to explain myself but because I think that my story could help somebody else out there. And even if it doesn't, because again, you have, you know, the healthiest body and you have no, you know, financial stresses, uh, just think about it. Just think about it for a minute. If the breadwinner of your household would die today, how would your life look like? And if you can answer honestly that it would be sustainable way to do it by yourself then maybe you're a single woman and you're doing it by yourself but what if something happens to you and you can't make any payments can you are you in a position where you're not going to struggle that's that's my question so anyways it, it's just you know food for thought um, it's not judging anybody because I think we're all happy in different places I tell my kids all the time if you're happy in New York City and you want to live in a tiny apartment where there's no green more power to you you go and live in New York City with no green stuff around you so it's not that I'm trying to say that everybody should live in the country, everybody should homestead, everybody should love what I love. This is what I love. But thank you so much for hearing me out on this matter. I truly appreciate it. I hope it makes a few things more clear on why we are kind of different compared to other channels. And I think that's why I share my story because it's different. Uh, and people that would resonate with my channel maybe doesn't with others. And maybe, you know, we you just find something interesting and different to watch compared to everyone else so anyways thank you so much for being here today guys please share your thoughts in the comments down below again nothing that you will say will really hurt my feelings i understand that we all see different things that we all see things differently so i you know we'll just agree to disagree if you think that what i'm saying is not really what you're living so thank you again for being here today guys and i'll talk to you guys next time